Let's start with a story out of D.C. where students are headed back to class today after a long holiday break, but they had to provide proof of a negative COVID test to get in. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did I say provide proof of a negative test? Yeah, yeah, no, my bad. They use the honor system. DCPS created a portal for parents and staff to upload their test results, but the website has crashed numerous times, prompting the district to allow parents or guardians to send their students to school with a note saying they're negative or a picture of their results, relying on everyone to be honest. Relying on everybody to be honest. The honor system didn't work for me when I was at St. Albans, didn't work for me when I was at Columbia, didn't work for me when I started working here. Hasn't worked for me yet. It is the D.C. government, so of course the tech crash, but were they really planning to trust parents writing notes? You can't trust some parents to help their kids with their homework. But y'all expect them to tell the truth about COVID? Some became parents by lying about test results in the first place. Yeah, I see y'all over there. Naturally, social media had a field day with tweets like this one from Kaba Queen who said DCPS has lost its mind. Or my favorite, this one from Mr. Wedekind with a picture of a note that says, Dear DCPS school, Billy does not have COVID. Signed, Billy's mom. Now, the good news, according to Mayor Bowser, more than 39,000 students have uploaded their test results. Maybe there is some honor left in the world. Now, students who have not uploaded their results and who don't have a picture of a negative test will be tested on site at their schools. By the way, no crayon notes accepted. No, pen and pencil only. That testing line is going to be a mess because grown adults can't get standing in line for a COVID test right, but I do commend DCPS for their efforts. Next up, some great news out of Prince George's for all you crab lovers. Yes, Captain White Seafood is coming back, but this time the restaurant will be located in Oxon Hill near National Harbor. The seafood gods are shining on us. Let us rejoice. Ah, people were heartbroken watching Captain White just leave the wharf and float off into the sunset. Ah, that was, you remember that? I was standing out there crying like, <laughs> that's my crab shack but without that we were left with this hole in our heart and we never would have learned that captain whites is a giant barge the number of people in the dmv in the world who knew captain whites could move could fit inside captain whites the wharf is lucky they ever paid rent knowing they had a built-in getaway plan you think i would pay rent if I could move like that, that empty gap in the war seafood market might be there, but the one in our hearts is full now. Captain White Seafood is coming back. It requires a slightly longer drive, but when does that ever stop crab lovers? Now you can buy crabs, then slide right down the street to MGM and gamble with Old Bay still on your breath. Now let's go to Reagan National Airport. That completes the DMV because a picture speaks a thousand words, and none of the words this video speaks are safe for work. This massive pileup of baggage at Reagan National Airport is thanks to a Monday snowstorm, by the way. Pandemic worker shortages and canceled flights. If ever there was a time to feel good about having tacky, easy to identify luggage, this is it. Yes, this was your moment. Somebody is on the verge of tears after looking at 17 basic black carry-ons that belong to other people. And they tried to clown me when I said I wanted Martin Lawrence inspired luggage for Christmas. They have traveler stuff laying around like the junkyard on Sanford and Son. Folks are gonna be yelling to air pet or airport staff like you big dummy. Now to all those looking at your bags, good luck and Godspeed. Don't get too stressed out, okay? Calm down. I don't want anybody getting too worked up or yelling. Oh, this is the big one. Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you, honey. Elizabeth, all those, all those false calls to Elizabeth. You know she got excited every time Fred said that and then he never came. Last, I'm wrapping up this monologue with the latest on the Capitol riot defendants and their legal saga since you guys know what day it is. A father and son who bragged they were among the first to enter the U.S. Capitol building on January 6th are facing up to five years in prison after pleading guilty to one felony count each. Hey, these two do everything together. This is degenerate dad goals. Daryl and Daniel Johnson are going to prison like, hey, we ruined our lives, but we did it as a family. We'll see how strong that bond is when they're arguing over who gets the top bunk. Imagine going to prison 
with your dad. He out here asking you questions like, hey, did you bring your shank, son? Yeah, that's my boy. I'll close my eyes while you put it back where you hit it. My favorite story, anybody, anybody? Of course it's Captain White's. I love a reunion and nothing can get in the way of DC folks buying crabs, welcome home.